we have talked about several different types of implementation for the same systems. But why do we want so many different structures, so many different implementations? If they all give us the same system function, why do we need so many? The reason is, in practice, they are all different. When we consider a practical systems, the coefficients are quantized, first of all. For one thing, coefficients are quantized, and when the coefficients are quantized, different structure will give rise to different system functions. For example, suppose we have a desired second order system HZ. We have designed the coefficient A1, A2, B0, B1, B2 coefficient, and there are form two implementation will be like this one that we have talked about earlier. And these coefficients a1, a2, b0, b1, b2 are coefficients we may have defined using a computer. And when we design these coefficients, these can be a double number. This could be stored in double format. But in practice, when we implement these coefficients, these coefficient a, b, they will be quantized. When we implemented these coefficients a0, a1, a1, a2, b0, b1, b2 are quantized. Say they are quantized to a1 hat, a2 hat, b0 hat, b1 hat, and b2 hat. For example, suppose we have a1 that's equal to 0 0.3. And uh, if we quantize using 3-bit quantizer, 3-bit quantization, that is 2 bit plus 1 sign bit, then uh, a1 hat is going to be quantized to a quarter. We have talked about quantizer earlier in, in chapter 4. So now in the actual implementation, all these coefficients will be the quantized version. When we multiply with this a1 coefficient, it will be the quantized version of a1 that minus a1 hat that we multiply, we that we multiply the signal with, and similar here we have a2 hat, b2 hat, b1 hat, and b0 hat. So the actual system function that's implemented here is one plus a1 hat, the inverse plus a2 hat, the minus two b0 hat plus b1 hat the inverse plus b2 hat the inverse. So when we structure different coefficient, the structures with the different implementation with the different multiplier, when these multipliers are quantized differently, we are going to get different systems. More generally, when we have an nth order system, again, this is our desired system, when it's implemented, all these coefficients will get quantized. And what gets implemented will be this H hat system in which all the coefficient are quantized version. Earlier when we talked about cascade form for real HN, we say that HZ can be implemented as a cascade of a first order and second order system. And um, these smaller system or subsystem HK all have a real coefficient. Now if we have a desired system HZ and we first express it in cascade form, and now the coefficient here will be this C, D, E, F instead of A and B. And when we implement HK and then quantize it, we will be quantizing the coefficient of HK, the coefficient for implementing HK, and um, this will be HK hat. In this implementation, we have the resulting system function will now be a cascade of these HK hat. Let's look at one example to see the effect of coefficient quantization. In this example, we have a second order 
IIR, the real coefficient. So the coefficient here, A1 and A2, they are real. And uh, we've only looked at the part of the poles. We have ignored, let's ignore the uh, zeros for the moment. The poles for such a photo at R E J theta, R E minus J theta, they are complex conjugate of each other. And uh, in particular, this A1 coefficient will be minus 2R cosine theta, and A2 is equal to R square. Now, if we implement such a system using direct form quantization, then uh, the coefficients that are quantized are these A1 and A2 coefficients. As an example, suppose the coefficients are quantized using 3 bits. That is 2 bits plus 1 sine bit. So altogether, 3 bits. If we have 2 bits to represent a number, we would have a 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And uh, with the plus minus sign, sign bit, we all together we have 7 possible values. And remember, A1 is actually related to the negative 2 times the negative of the real part of the pole. The real part of the poles is r cosine theta, so it's 2 minus 2 times r cosine theta. So, 7 possible value for A1 will mean, in particular, that the real part, the real part of the pole, have a 7 possible value. 7 possible value of A1 means the real part of the pole have 7 possible values. So, there's the possibility, it's equal to 0, 0, that's one possible value. And then it has seven possible value, right? So then it has half. We have a strong seven lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven lines representing a seven possible value of A1. Now, how about A2? A2, it's supposed we consider the value of A2 to be between 1 and then minus 1, and we quantize it, right? So it could be 0, and it could be a quarter, and it could be half, and then 3 quarters. These are the possible value of A2, and then plus minus, with a plus minus sign. But then, when we consider A2 is actually equal to, A is actually equal to, R squared, so we have only positive values. So R squared, the possible value for R will be the square root of these four values, 0 and then half, and then 1 over square root 2, and then square root 3 over 2. So these are the possible value of R. R represents the radius where the pole lies on. Now let's draw the possible radius of the for which that we can have the pole. This is a circle of a half. Oh, sorry about my circles. And then 0, and then uh, also 1 over square root 2, that will make it around 0.7. So here, let me draw as 0.7. This is a 0.7. And then there's also uh, square root 3 over 2, that would be around 0.86. So it's around here. That's 0.86. And what are the possible locations of the pole? The real part is on the blue lines. And the absolute value of the pole is on the circles. So, for example, this will be one possible choice. It lies on the blue line and the black circles. Here's another possibility. Here's another possibility. And we also have here 
three possibility. And then here. And two here too. And then we have another possibility here. These are the possible location of the poles and the first quadrant. And we can see that the possible pole locations are on the grid. Form by the vertical line and the circles. And one thing that we may notice is that the grid is a sparser around x-axis. So the most of the location of the possible location of the pole is here, 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 here. But uh, there are not the whole lot of choices of the poles around the real axis. Now let's consider a different implementation of a second order IR system, you will be asked to derive the system function for such a system in class. For such a system, the, um, the pole can be verified to be at the poles are alpha plus j beta and alpha minus j beta complex conjugate pair. And we notice that in this implementation, something is different. The coefficient that are the multipliers in such a system happen to be alpha, beta, and these happen to be the real and imaginary part of the pole. When we implement the system, we quantize the coefficient. We are quantizing the real part and the imaginary part of the pole directly as opposed to the case in the previous direct form implementation, we are quantizing the real part and uh, the, the absolute value of the pole square. That's the value that we are quantizing. But here, we are quantizing the real part and imaginary part directly. Now, suppose we draw out, we identify the possible location of the poles as in previous example, then the real part would have a possible location and the imaginary part would also have seven possible location one two three four five six and then seven and like before the possible location of the pole are on the grid but now this time, the grid are formed by the vertical and horizontal lines. And here are the possible location of the pole in this case. And we can see that they are more uniform. Their distribution is more uniform instead of concentrated on the places away from the real axis. Pole location more uniform. So when we consider all these different structures, different implementations, although it may be the same without coefficient quantization, but with coefficient quantization, they all have different stories. Just now we talked about coefficient quantization and their effect. Now let's talk about other imperfection in a practical system implementation. For example, not just the coefficient of the system that are quantized, the signal that are being processed are also quantized. For example, in this ideal case, we have a C2D that takes samples of a continuous time signal and uh, it's supposed in the discrete time. As an example, we have a first order IIR filter here, and then we convert it back to the continuous time case using a D2C converter. That's the ideal case without quantization. Now let's take quantization into the picture. When we take samples of the input signal, we have talked about earlier in chapter 4 that 
the samples are quantized. Suppose we uh, qu we quantize it using B1 bits. So this is a B1 plus 1 bit A to D. B1 bits plus sine bit. And then when the signal is processing, pro being processed in the digital domain, we have Z inverse here, a delay. And then we multiply it by the coefficient a, but now the coefficient will be quantized as well. Let's say it's quantized to a hat. After the signal is being multiplied with a hat, then there's another quantizer. They will quantize it to b bit. Let's say it's quantized to b bit. Let's say that's the number of bits that we use to process the signal. And now we are going to convert the signal back to continuous time. And let's say we are using a B0 plus 1 bit D to A. Then we will first make it a signal of B0 bits. And then D to C. We get a C hat signal back. Quantization itself is a nonlinear operation, and to make it more tractable, usually we can model the quantization noise as an additive noise like we did in Chapter 4. To model the quantization associated with A to D, we can, like before, we model it as a additive noise say this additive noise is E1 and here we have Z inverse and then the quantized coefficient A hat and for the quantization we model it as a additive noise E to N let's say it's E to N and now for this quantizer associated with the D to A we can model it as another additive noise E3 and then C to D and with the such a linearized model we can then analyze the effect of uh, this B1 bit quantizer, this B bit quantizer, this B0 bit quantizer, the effect of all these three quantizer and the performance of the system.